get a huge welcome for his first appearance in Sacramento at California Free Thought Day, David Smalley. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. I told, I told Ryan not to go anywhere yet. You guys see Ryan right here? First of all, he's done a wonderful job all day, hasn't he? Just, just take a look at him for a second, because all day I've been sitting out there watching him, and it was only about five minutes ago that I realized his shirt doesn't say Jesus. Can you open your, can you open your jacket? Ah. I was like, we lost him. He's going back. Ah. Thank you, Ryan. It's an honor to share a platform with so many incredible activists. And I know we don't always agree on everything, but if we did, it would be hard to call this Free Thought Day now, wouldn't it? It's obvious that any good movement is a diverse movement. But it's important that as we expand our diversity that we don't lose our focus. We are not just free thinkers. We are parents who target education reform and science-based curriculum. We are end-of-life advocates who target aid in dying and death with dignity. We are legislators who target affordable college tuition. We are women who target reproductive health and bodily autonomy. We are Latinos who target immigration reform and profiling. We are black non-believers who target change in the justice system and seek equal opportunities. We are gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender free thinkers who target equal rights to love. We are free speech advocates who target bad ideas with better ideas. And we are white non-believers who realize that we've dominated the face of atheism and we want to help diversify the movement. And at the same time, we can't just shut up and walk away because this is our fight too and we are all in this together. And most of us are in many of those categories at the same time. But if everyone is driving the same bus with different agendas, sometimes it's hard to know where we're going. I'm proud to say that our community is growing in diversity of gender with more and more women speaking at conferences and being involved in leadership roles. It's also growing in diversity of ethnic backgrounds, diversity in skin colors, diversity of sexual identities, and even diversity of political opinions. Our movement, the free thought community, is a convergence of these ideas and a meeting place for shared goals. But recently, our movement for some reason has tried to become all of those movements at the same time. And then our mission becomes confused. And like any family, when we're stretched thin and stressed out, we take it out on each other. So I'm asking you right now to stop and think about why all of these major social movements converge at the intersection of free thought and free speech. Why would that happen? Think about why there is so much overlap. Why do the black community and the gay community and the women's rights organizations and trans organizations and Hispanic organizations and aid and dying advocates and immigration reform activists and journalists fighting for the freedom of press care about identifying as free thinkers? It's because we all share common values of personal freedom. We're seeing a time in our nation where special privilege for religions to discriminate 
is being celebrated as a victory. We're seeing our own president give in to religious authority. He ordered the attorney general not to enforce IRS laws which keep churches in line. He issued a 25-page memo increasing protections for people of faith. He rolled back a requirement for women's reproductive health based on their employer's religion. He reversed a policy that included LGBT employees under an anti-discrimination law. We're seeing tweets from this commander-in-chief about this being God's country and insulting members of our military. And now he's saying that it's disgusting that we have the freedom of press to talk about it. What's happening in DC is the lines are being blurred between a democracy and a theocracy. And no matter where your passion lies the heaviest, you're here today. You're here because you've realized that if we don't have a separation of church and state, nothing else is attainable. In a theocracy, you don't get to protest. In a nation ruled by the Bible, there is no pride parade. A book that speaks of women as property has no place guiding the governance of a free and equal nation. A book that says for slaves to obey their earthly masters cannot run a nation where black lives matter. In a theocracy, there is no equality and there is no freedom. None of us can afford to ignore this president's actions. So even though you may vehemently disagree with some of your fellow atheists on political opinions, without the core principles of religious freedom and free speech, you aren't even allowed to have the arguments. And this is why we need to lift each other up instead of tearing each other down. If we turn our community into a fight over who's the best activist or who's the most progressive, we will lose sight of our common ground. There's a large number of public intellectuals, scientists, politicians, who are ashamed to identify with us for a whole new reason. They see the online trolling and insults and fights and say, don't call me that. I'm not one of them. And that's heartbreaking. If you dedicate your platform to how stupid someone else is, you're not making yourself look any better, you're just making our progress that much harder. And if you attempt to purify your movement of everyone you disagree with, you will soon find yourself alone and ineffective. And that is exactly what the religious right wants. They hope we crumble. So let's get our priorities in order. Let's embrace intersectionality as a way to understand struggles and diversify our movement. But let's not use it to search for the perfect activist or to silence someone with fewer intersections than yourself because we need each other right now. The majority of today's politicians even those who we rely on for common sense in Congress, they can let us down. I'm so proud of Dianne Feinstein right now. She's introducing common sense gun legislation that it appears even Republicans are finally paying attention to. But even she, in the wake of this horrific tragedy, said that her daughter almost went to the Las Vegas concert. And then she added, very deliberately, for one reason or another, they didn't go. And then she says, I just thank God. Now, I know what she meant. And you know what she meant. But she probably doesn't even realize the implications of that statement. 
or how insensitive that sounds. That God deserves thanks for keeping her daughter safe, yet allowed over 500 people to be shot and 58 to lose their lives. Many politicians seem to have this delusion that God is looking out for them in particular and that a God has the power to keep us safe. But we cannot make real change until we accept that we and we alone have the power to keep us safe. And there's a part of what we do that's actually for believers in this country. A lot of people lose sight of that. As secular activists, yes, we work to separate church and state, but that's also for the sake of the church to be able to, op to operate independently without discrimination. Secular values voters support the rights of religious citizens to live freely and believe freely and practice their religion freely, but we do not support those religious citizens dictating how the rest of us live. And that's why my message today is about remembering our common ground and uniting for the future. We will not sit around waiting for a God to save us. And once we divorced ourselves from that belief we gained the obligation to be there for humanity. So let's focus on bringing our groups together and uniting under freedom and liberty to become the voting bloc for the next election and for years to come. Well, hold on, David. Wait, are you saying that you would march side by side in DC with some anti-gay bigot who happens to be an atheist? Let me tell you how I would handle that. I would walk directly up to that person and I would say, I hope you realize that marching for freedom includes the freedom of love. And I would keep on marching. But are you saying that we shouldn't correct the bad ideas of people in our movement? I'm saying to make those corrections with science-based arguments using decency and respect instead of outrage, anger, and name-calling. But David, are you saying that you would lobby Congress with an atheist who is also a neo-Nazi? I would say to that Nazi, we settled that in 1945. Bigots have always been here. Bigots will continue to be here, and they're not going to stop us from making progress if we stay focused. So let's focus. Let's focus on getting as many secular people in the midterm elections as possible. Let's focus on encouraging people to embrace the labels of atheist, free thinker, and skeptic. Let's focus on lifting each other up and having honest discussions instead of social media fights. In order for us to make real progress as a voting bloc, we need strategy, unity, and a message that's clear and peaceful. And I'd like to propose that message today. I'm calling for everyone who calls themselves a free thinker. Black, brown, white, Asian, straight, gay, queer, trans, liberal, conservative, progressive, libertarian, and independent to come together today and shout from the rooftops that a freedom of religion includes a freedom from religion. And no matter how much they disagree with our views, we have the freedom to say them and they have the freedom to not like it. We all share a government and that government doesn't get to choose sides. That is what brings us together. That's what brings us together in spite of our differences. So let's rise above the insults. Let's unite and stay focused on keeping the freedoms that allow us to disagree. And let's make the commitment today 
to be an example of what humanism looks like in the United States of America. Thank you.